Welcome to Video Podcast number 64. I'm going to give you an early warning. Uh, I'd say probably 99% chance the week between. There's my phone. November 20th and November 26th. That week, basically the week of Thanksgiving. That Monday before Thanksgiving through that Sunday after Thanksgiving, I would say 99% chance I'm not going to be doing any videos during that seven day period. Starting with the Monday before Thanksgiving and the Sunday after Thanksgiving. I won't be doing any free videos or any Patreon exclusive videos during that seven day period. Um, because I'm going to be busy with a lot of other stuff. So, just letting you know that. Um, yeah. So, that's basically the week, not this week coming up, but the week after next. The week after next. I won't be doing it from that Monday before Thanksgiving to that Sunday after Thanksgiving. I won't be, again, 99% chance I won't be doing any videos unless some urgent comes up. Um, what else? As usual, leave me feedback in the comment section. And you can always write me private feedback at coaching at mode1.net. Coaching at mode1.net. And, oh, as well as my Facebook pages, my Facebook pages. What else? Housekeeping notes I'm trying to think of. See, today I don't have my bullet points to my left, your right. I'm winging it again. Um, okay, this video probably, oh, I always say this. I always start off saying, this video won't be too long. And then it goes like two hours and shit. Uh... Well, first of all, I want to say for my last video, video number 63, man, you know, a lot of videos I do, I get usually a blend of positive feedback and negative feedback, but brother, well, I was going to say brothers, like as if I just got brothers as my listeners and viewers, a lot of guys love video 63, I had a lot of guys write me and say that, that that actually clarified a lot of things for them. Um, for those handful of people who may not have watched video 63 yet, my very last video. Yeah, among other things, I talked about how Mo One is not solely and specifically about just being upfront, specific, and straightforwardly honest with women about your sexual desires, interests, and intentions. What I would describe as being verbally direct. It's not solely and specifically about being verbally direct. You know, as I said in the video, you can go back and watch it for those who didn't watch it yet, but I basically said there's three main components to Mo One. There's three main components to Mo One. Component one, number one, the main component is the verbal direct piece. That's the main component. But there's at least two secondary components to Mo One. One of the secondary components to Mo One is your eyes, man. Again, look look at my eyes on, on the Mo One logo. On my Mo One logo, my eyes. Yeah, man, that's a big part of Mo One. Is something as simple as your your eye contact, man. If you don't use confident, powerful, direct eye contact with women, you can't really call yourself Mo One. You can't really call yourself. Like, if you were to approach a woman and you kind of start looking all over the place, hey, my name is uh, John, and I was just wondering, uh, you know, w would you like to have sex with me sometime soon? W was I just verbally direct? Yes, I was. I asked the woman directly, would you like to have sex with me? But w where was my eye contact, though? My eye contact was all over the place, man. You can't, you can't call yourself more one if you don't have powerful, direct eye contact. Like, I always talk about how one of the ways I started being more one was, I, when I first started being more one, I was basically, for the most part, emulating and imitating 
this fictional character in a porn movie played by John Leslie. His name was Jack. He was the main character in the, in the porn classic Talk Dirty to Me and Talk Dirty to Me Part 2. And one of the first body language things I picked up on him, man, was it the way he used his eyes, man. He had very powerful, confident, direct eye contact with women. That was one of the first things I picked up about him in terms of his body language and demeanor was his eye contact, man. Hey, man, you, you, you can't call yourself more one if you got non-confident eye contact. Non-confident eye contact, or what I call fidgety eye contact. Fidgety meaning you're looking all over the place while you're talking to a woman. So that's one secondary component is how confident your eye contact is and just overall, your overall just what I would call body language and demeanor. Your disposition, as people call it. You got to have what I would call a highly self-assured disposition about you. Uh, so that's one secondary component. And another secondary component is a combination of two things. Is a combination of your voice. That's another thing. Using John Leslie, man. That's what John Leslie was known for in the porn industry. Was how verbally smooth and verbally seductive he was. That was like his main claim to fame in the porn industry. Because truthfully, in terms of, you know, most guys in the porn industry, they're measured by their dick size. But in all due respect to John Leslie, compared to a lot of guys in the porn industry, like, for example, compared to John Holmes and Ron Jeremy and a couple other guys, John Leslie didn't really have a big dick. <laughs> he didn't. I mean, most people who know the porn industry will tell you that. John Leslie, in terms of just pure dick size, he, he, he couldn't compare to guys like John Holmes and Ron Jeremy. Like, John Holmes, his shit was like 14 inches. I think Ron Jeremy, his shit was like 12 inches. Um, John Leslie, no, nah, man. He, but John Leslie's claim to fame in the porn industry was he was known for two things actually he was known for being arguably the best true actor in the porn industry he could actually act like a lot of porn stars man male and female they can't really act they know how to have sex but they can't truly act like a lot of people who used to evaluate john leslie would say how he could have worked in the mainstream hollywood industry because he was actually a truly good actor his, his acting skills were considered like exceptional. And then secondly, he was, he was known for being very verbally smooth and verbally seductive in his, in his scenes with women. He was known, he was known as the, the number one guy in the porn industry who was the best at erotic dirty talk, talking dirty to women. And, um, even beyond the talk dirty series, he was known for being good at erotic dirty talk. So anyway, that's one another. That's the third and final secondary component. Uh, well, the main again, the main component is being verbally direct, and then there's two secondary components: confident eye contact, confident body language, and being verbally smooth, verbally seductive, slash being good at erotic dirty talk, and along with that, being good at reading women. If you notice about me, when it comes to toot my horn, or again, as Tony Macy calls it, rubbing my balls in men's faces, next to me toot my horn about my erotic dirty talk skills, that's probably the second most thing I toot my horn on. I know how to read women, man. A lot of guys don't know how to read women. That's, that's one area where a lot of men fall short, man. They don't know how to read women. I know how to read women, man. I, I, I can read women very quickly and very effectively. And see, here's the thing, and this is where my coaching and consultation sessions come in. As this woman I talked about that called into my blog talk radio show one time. See, truthfully, man, if you really put your mind to it, you can switch from being verbally indirect to being verbally direct in a matter of 24 to 48 hours. That ain't something that takes unless you got a lot of what I call psychological blockers preventing you from being verbally direct, which a lot of guys do. And I work with a lot of guys in that area. 
But assuming you don't, that's something that can virtually happen overnight. You switching from being verbally vague and ambiguous and verbally indirect to being verbally direct. But those secondary components, man, quite frankly, man, you can't learn that shit overnight. That's not something that's going to happen overnight. Like that, again, referencing that conversation I had with that woman who called into my blog, her radio show, that's what she, she emphasized. She was like, Alan, your ability to read women, I can tell you right now, that's not something a man can develop in a, in a matter of just days or even weeks. That's something that takes months and even years to cultivate. And I would generally agree with her, man. I would generally agree with her, man. That's something you got to, the, the, the body language thing aspect and the reading women's body language aspect, man, that, that takes time, man. That, that ain't something you're going to develop, like, you know, in a matter of 24, 48, 72 hours. That comes from interacting with a lot of women. A lot of women. That's when you become good at reading women is when you've interacted with a lot of women. Like, I'm talking about just, like, hundreds, if not thousands. Um, same with reading women just verbally. Like, I, I know how to read women just verbally, like over the phone. And that comes from the fact that I've had so many conversations with women over the phone, man. Like, I think most of you know, man, in terms of just phone sex, man, I've had phone sex since roughly 1992, so about 25 years ago. I've had phone sex with approximately 2,000 women, man. 2,000 women. <laughs> I've had phone sex with about 2,000 women starting with 1992. So I know the nuances of women's voices. I know what to look for when I'm in a conversation with them. Um, so anyway, a lot I got a lot of positive feedback about that video. And a lot of guys have been asking. <laughs> it's funny, a lot. A lot of guys have been asking me about my book now, Who Said It Again? Guys who first didn't pay attention to that book now asking me about my book, Who Said It Again? Which concentrates on that component. The verbal smooth and verbal seductive component as, along with reading women's body language. Oh, I need to correct a mistake. I was talking about my book sales in one of my recent videos and I said Mo One was my best-selling ebook and paperback and Who Said It Again? was my best-selling audiobook. I actually was looking at my numbers for my paperback because I don't. My uh, paperback numbers are not as real time up to date as my say my audiobook numbers. Like what's today? Friday. Like if today is Friday, like I already know my audiobook numbers for like Wednesday, and it's only Friday. I already know my audiobook numbers up through Wednesday. Um. Paperback numbers don't come out like that. And to a lesser extent, ebook numbers either. Anyway, actually, Mo One is not my best selling paperback. I thought it was. I had assumed it was, but it wasn't. It's not. Mo One is my best selling ebook, but actually, as of the last, I think, four months, it surprised me. The Beta Male Revolution, believe it or not, is my best selling paperback. Yes, I would say starting with July of this year. July through October, from July through October of this year, the Beta Male Revolution has actually been my best-selling paperback, slightly above Mo One. Yeah, that's been my best-selling paperback. So Mo One is no longer my best-selling paperback. It's my best-selling ebook. So I got three different books that are, that are ranked number one in terms of sales in three different versions. Ebook version, ebook version, again, whenever you see me looking down and to my right, your left, that means I'm looking at notifications I receive from Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Yahoo email, and one or two other apps. Um, so somebody just posted something for one of my YouTube videos. Um. Yeah, Mo One is my number one ebook 
in, I think it has been ever since it came out. Yeah, I don't think there's ever been any other book other than Mo One that's been my number one selling ebook. Paperback, I've had three different books that have been number, my number one paperback. Initially, it was Mo One, and then starting with January of uh, 2012 through September of 2016, it was Ooh Say It Again. Then from October of 2016 through June of this year, it was Mo One again. And starting with July of this year up until now, it's the Betamel Revolution. Betamel Revolution is my best selling paperback. And my audio book has been Who Said Again ever since it came out. It was Mo One, but starting with April of 2015. Who Said Again has been my best-selling audiobook. But yeah, because of my last video, a lot of guys want to read, either read the ebook or paperback version of Who Said Again, or want to purchase the audiobook version. Again, I always prefer that you purchase the audiobook version, because that's, that's the version I make the most money on. I make the most money off of my audiobook sales, the second most amount of money off of my ebook sales, and the least amount of money off of my paperback sales. You know what this is? My favorite flavor of vitamin water zero. Shine, baby. Okay. <clears throat> Here's the main thing I want to talk about. Again, it shouldn't be that long. I can almost guarantee I'm going to be less than an hour. But uh, if you've been paying attention to the news in the last 24 hours, really for the last few weeks, but particularly in the last 24 hours, these Hollywood accusations of sexual harassment, sexual misconduct, Rape, date rape, sexual assault is just out of control. But see, if, if, if most of you know my background, you'll know that before I became a, a book author and a dating coach, that's the number one industry I worked in. I worked in the entertainment industry from, what, the age of 20, about 23 yeah, starting with the age of 23, all the way up until my late 30s. That's the industry in, in, I worked in, in some capacity or another. Um, yeah, I've worked as an actor. I used to do like local, regional, and I did at least two or three national te television commercials. I used to be a print model. Like, you know those Sears ads where you see the people who pose it? And clothes and shit. I used to do that type of shit. I used to be a print model when I was in my 20s. Um, I've done stand-up comedy. I did that only for a short period. I did stand-up for about a little over a year in 89 and 90. Um, I've done screenwriting. I've, I've like pitched scripts to Hollywood executives when I lived in L.A. I worked at a few of the movie studios, NBC, 20th Century Fox. I've had temp assignments at other movie studios like Paramount, Warner Brothers, Sony, Columbia. Anyway, all that to say is, man, I, 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 that's the main industry I've worked in, you know, before I, I decided to become a, a book author and a dating coach. Most of my career pursuits were in the entertainment industry. Um, here's the thing. Most of the stuff that's going on in, in Hollywood as far as related to this sexual behavior by the men that have been accused, this shit ain't new. This shit been going on probably since the 1940s, 1950s, if not, if not before that. Entertainment industry has always been known for guys pretty much having their way with women. That was kind of like the unwritten rule of the entertainment industry is that powerful guys would basically 
identify beautiful, sexy women and essentially say, if you let me have my way with you sexually, I'll help you become a superstar actress or singer or whatever, model, whatever, TV personality. That's just how media and entertainment has worked for years, man. A lot of guys get into the entertainment industry specifically so that they can bang hot, sexy women. That's literally what a lot of guys, that's, that's like a lot of guys' number one motivation for getting in the, in the entertainment industry or media or both. is so they can be in a better position to bang hot, sexy women. So, number one, a lot of this shit ain't new. It's just that most guys up until now were able to get away with the shit. They were able to get away with the shit. And now you see society's changing. And men still want to say that we're winning? Okay. <laughs> all right. Sure looks like we win it with all these Hollywood accusations. Winning. Yeah, women ain't taking this shit no more, dude. Women ain't taking this shit no more. And you know what? And I mentioned this in at least one other video bar games. I've seen some guys on social media defending all these guys. And, and, and all their criticisms have been directed at the women. Like, all oh, these women are full of shit with all these after-the-fact allegations and accusations. I'm going to tell you, man, I don't defend most of these men. I really don't. I don't defend most of these men. Why? Because in most of the instances that I read about, none of these men were more one. None of these men were more one. I haven't read hardly any instance where the situation was a man just confidently and straightforwardly told a woman that he wanted to fuck her and she respectfully dis declined his invitation for sex. I haven't read any incident of that nature. Now, if there was an incident of that nature and a woman was to days later, weeks later, months later, or years later, try to accuse that guy of sexual harassment, then that's when I would be on the guy's side. That's when I'd be like, oh, that woman, that's, that's bullshit. Because, see, that's not sexual harassment. And I've, I've always argued that. You telling a woman that you want to have sex with her in a confident, straightforward manner is not sexual harassment. I would even arguably say, even in the workplace, even though I know most workplaces have their rules about sexual harassment, but I would say even in the workplace, that's not sexual harassment, man. True harassment is when you hit on a woman, she rejects you, and you continue, key word, you continue to persistently hit on her after she's already rejected you at least once. That's harassment. That's harassment. Is when you hit on a woman, a woman has rejected you at least once, but you continue to hit on her. That's true harassment. Now, with most corporations, though, what they consider harassment sometimes is even if you talk to a woman in an X-rated manner, because their argument, a lot of corporations' argument is a woman may want to reject you, But she may be scared to for fear that she might get fired, she might get demoted, she might get more work added to her day-to-day -day responsibilities, etc. So that's why a lot of corporations protect women when it comes to sexual harassment in the sense that sometimes a woman doesn't even have to reject you even one time for it to be considered harassment. Now that said, here's how the entertainment industry works. Similar to how my, my, my capacity as a, as a dating coach works. See, like when I work with people most of the time, I don't have employees, particularly when it comes to women. I don't have employees. I have collaborators and independent contractors. Collaborators and independent contractors. See, that's a different animal. See, it's easy for a woman to accuse a male supervisor or male coworker of sexual harassment when that woman's an employee of a company or corporation. Hmm. 
Now that's a woman I ain't heard from from for a long time. It's funny how women you ain't heard from for months, if not years, all of a sudden write you a little Facebook message. Notifications again. Um, she must have been thinking about me. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. If a woman's an employee, it's easy for her to charge somebody with a, a sexual harassment accusation. When you work with a woman as some type of business collaborator or a woman, like all of my personal assistants, women I've worked with who are my personal assistants, either for a speaking engagement or as a home office personal assistant, they were, I hired them as independent contractors. When a woman works with a guy as an independent contractor, she can't accuse that guy of sexual harassment. I mean, she can, but it's not the same thing. Because, like, I've had women who are my female assistants who were independent contractors that I told them straight up that I either wanted to fuck them or that I was going to fuck them. <laughs> told them that straight up. I talked about that on one of my previous videos. So I told them that straight up. I've never had a woman knock on wood... I've never had a woman accuse me of anything up to this day. I've never had a woman accuse me of anything related to sexual harassment, sexual misconduct, date rape, sexual assault, anything of that nature. I've never had a woman. The closest I've, I've come, I've had women accuse me of using what they would call crass language, crass, socially inappropriate language. But, uh, But yeah, in the last 24 hours, the big person in the news related to Hollywood accusations is uh, the comedian Louis C.K. Louis C.K. See, I can't, I can't defend this dude, man. I can't defend him. I like Louis C.K. I like his humor, most of his humor. But I can't defend him, man. This dude was going up to women, asking women, would you like to watch me masturbate? Look at Louis C.K. Okay? Just look at him. I, I'm going to borrow O'Shea Duke Jackson's line when he's... If you ever go to O'Shea, O'Shea Duke Jackson's channel, sometimes when he want to roast people, he'll say, look at so-and-so. Just look at his profile. Don't say anything. Just look at him. Don't say anything. Just look at him. <laughs> Shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson. But serious, man, you know, I'm going to touch on that sensitive area of looks, man. But come on, man. Come on. What attractive, sexy woman wants to watch a motherfucker who looks like Louis C.K. masturbate? I mean, real talk here. Real talk. What what attractive sexy woman wants to watch a motherfucker who looks like Louis C.K. masturbate? Now, I told you I had a buddy in L.A. who was a male stripper, man. He used to pull his dick out on women all the time. Women would love that shit. They used to love that shit. I'm going I'm to post a, a, a link to the video with Tom Brady. I mentioned this video a couple times. Saturday Night Live, if you watch ever watch NBC Saturday Night Live, they had a skit one time with the NFL football player Tom Brady. It was about sexual harassment. And <laughs> I'm not going to get all the details, but it, it what it basically showed, and this is real, and I talk about this in my book, The Beta Male Revolution, my best-selling paperback. See, I know a lot of you guys get tired of me always talking about the delineation between alpha males and beta males. I know you do, but you just got to deal with it. But one of the things I say in the beta male revolution, man, women do not respond the same way to sexual behavior exhibited by beta males as they do sexual behavior exhibited by a man who they perceive to be an alpha male. That is a fucking fact. That's not an opinion. That is a fucking fact. 
If a woman perceives you as a beta male, she don't want you exhibiting no sexually provocative behavior towards her. I guarantee you, man, her reaction is going to be more along the lines of, Ew, gross. You're disgusting. You're creepy. Stop that, please. Ew, you're gross. Stop that. You're, you're creepy. Whereas a man who she perceives to be a handsome, sexy alpha male can exhibit that exact same behavior. That exact same behavior. And she'll be more, her reaction will be more along the lines of, you so bad, you nasty, you bad, you nasty. That's how women are, man. That's how women are, man. I'm telling you, man, that's how women are. And this, this, this video, the Saturday Night Live skit, it demonstrated that. Like, one of the characters on the, uh, SNL, uh, his name was Fred Armisen. I love him. He's a, he's a good comedian. But he plays like kind of the average looking semi-nerd type guy. And everything he says, the women pick up the phone and call human resources to file an accusation of sexual harassment. But Tom Brady, man, he grabs one chick's tit and she just giggles and laughs. And then another chick, he walks around with his underwear in just his underwear. And a woman doesn't have any type of negative reaction. Now, that's a little exaggeration. But Chris Rock had a joke about this when he was talking about the Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. The first big case in the United States that dealt with sexual harassment was that case involving Clarence Thomas when he was a candidate for the Supreme Court in this, uh, this sister named Anita Hill. If you're not familiar with this case, look it up on Google. Clarence Thomas, Anita Hill. That was the first major mainstream case of sexual harassment. That's when That was the main case that made sexual harassment become like a big issue in this country. Was that case between Clarence Thomas and Anita Hill. And Chris Rock, a few years ago, had a joke about that. What he basically said was, he said... I can't remember his exact words because, so like I normally do a lot of times, I'm paraphrasing his humor. But he basically said, "Man, he was basically like, look at Clarence Thomas. I mean, look at him. He was like, of course Anita Hill was going to charge him with sexual harassment. And Chris Rock was like, I guarantee you, if that was if Denzel Ross Washington had said the same sexually provocative shit to her, she would have been like, oh, Denzel, you're so bad. You're nasty. You're nasty, Denzel. You're so bad. He was like, she wouldn't have charged him with no sexual harassment. Dude. Ain't no woman want to watch Louis C.K. masturbate. When has Louis C.K. ever been known for being one of these two, either handsome and or sexy? Handsome and or sexy. I'm always saying in my videos, you got to be one of the two, if not both. You got to be one of the two, if not both. The less you are on the look scale, the more you have to have something about you, like what's known as swag, confidence and swag, that makes you sexy. You got to have confidence, seductive charm, and what many people call an urban slang, swag, the less you are on the look scale. See, like, my role as a dating coach, I tell men all the time, man, I can't help you when it comes to looks. I can help contribute to all of the non-physical attributes that contribute to your seductive charm and sex appeal. I can help you with, with non-physical attributes. But when it comes to your physical attributes, man, I, I mean, I can't help you on that tip, man. You got to help yourself on that tip. You know, things like proper grooming, personal hygiene, eating right, exercising, dressing better. You know, so when it comes to all the physical related attributes that contribute to a man's sex appeal, I can't help you on that. You know, I can give you some, some casual tips. But in terms of detailed assistance, I don't, I don't help in that area. I help men with a lot of the non-physical attributes and characteristics that I feel contribute to a man's verbal communication skills, his seductive charm, and his overall sex appeal. 
But you gotta have one of you gotta have one of both. Women gotta consider you sexy in either a physical way, a non physical way, or a blend of both. Either in a physical way, a non physical way, or a blend of both. Louis C.K., I've never heard anybody describe him as sexy. But yet he's going up to women asking them would they like to watch him masturbate. Now, I guarantee you, if a guy who looked like Chris Hemsworth, the guy who plays Thor in the Marvel movies, was to take two women to his hotel room and take off his clothes and start masturbating, you think he would be accused of sexual misconduct? Come on, man. Come on, man. You think of any man who looks like a Chippendales male stripper was a, was to take a woman in two women in his hotel room and take off his clothes and start stroking his own dick that some woman gonna be like ah let me out of the room? Come on, man. I even speak for myself, man. I've had incidences with women where I just arbitrarily just like pulled up. Y'all, matter of fact, y'all should know at least one of my stories, my infamous. Same day seduction stories that involve me doing something somewhat similar to what Louis C.K. Not quite. I've never gone up to a woman and said, "Would you like to act, watch me masturbate?" That don't even make sense to me. But as far as just pulling out my dick on a woman, yeah, I've had I've had instances where I just pulled out my dick on a woman. One of my infamous stories that I've told before. One time I fucked a woman who was a gas station cashier. This was I remember it was summer of 1990. I was coming from a party in Chicago. I stopped at this gas station. It's probably like two o'clock in the morning, and most gas stations they usually have men working at night. But for some reason, at this gas station, they had this really attractive woman working. I say on a scale of one to ten, she yeah, she wasn't that attractive. It wasn't like she was an eight, nine, or ten. She was probably like a five point five six, five point five six. Yeah, she's probably about five point five six, and she was the gas station uh, cashier. And skipping over some miscellaneous details, I start talking shit to her through the window. You know how they had those like glass bulletproof windows? I was talking shit to her because she had a real sexy body. And I started telling her so. And anyway, man, at one point, man, I just pulled my dick out on the bay in the gas station. I know some security camera probably picked me up. I know I'm on somebody, I was on somebody's security camera. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't have done that. But yeah, I did it. I, yeah, I pulled out my dick on this woman, man, in the gas station. And sure enough, it worked to my benefit. This chick ended up temporarily closing the gas station so I could fuck her. She closed the gas station for about 20 to 30 minutes so I could fuck her, man. Yeah, I fucked this woman in that gas station, man. I was in the summer of 1990. Remember I talked about 1990? I said that was my second best year for pussy next to 1985. Yeah, man. 1990, man, I fucked this chick in a gas station. But yeah, man, that was an instance where I just, I just like boldly pulled my dick out on this chick. But yeah, man, going back to Louis C.K., though, got man, his career, man, I ain't gonna say it's definitely over, but similar to Kevin Spacey, man, his shit might be done, dude. His shit might be done, man. And I, I again, I like Louis C.K., but I can't defend him, man. Because that's honest. And here's the bigger thing. A lot of the instances that have been reported about Louis C.K., man, were during years where he was married, man. He was married up until 2008. Dude, you know how I feel about cheating, man. I, I, I don't, man, I don't defend any cheater. If you're a man who cheats on your wife, your fiance, or your girlfriend, you ain't going to ever get me to defend you. I don't defend cheaters, man. I despise men who cheat. I really do. I despise men who cheat. That's related to what I was talking about in my last video about being a true player, man. To me, if you're a true player and or a pimp, man, you don't have to you don't like you don't have to lie to your main woman about you fucking other women. You make them accept that program. That's what you do when you're a true player or a pimp, man. You make your main woman accept the fact that you're gonna be fucking other women. That's what I do. That's exactly what I've done over the years, man. I can even a lot of times I had a main woman and I was still fucking other women. And my main woman knew I was fucking other women. She knew I was fucking other women. Because I told her. I told my main woman I was going to be fucking other women. 
That's how you roll when you're a true player and or pimp, man. You don't be lying to women. That's weak, man. That's weak. Like, that goes back centuries, man. That's when I first found out about the term concubine. That's what a concubine is. A concubine is different from a mistress. Like, some people use those two terms interchangeably, but they're not. A mistress is a woman you fucking, while you're married, behind your wife's back. That's a mistress. A mistress, or what some people call a side piece, well, a side piece would be the unmarried version of a mistress, but a a uh, a mistress is a woman you fucking while you're married behind your wife's back. A concubine is a woman you're fucking that your wife knows about. If you're fuck, if you're married, and say you got two other women you fucking on a regular, semi-regular basis, and your wife knows about these women, she knows you're fucking these women, and she's basically giving you her approval for you. That's a concubine. Matter of fact, even more specifically, did you know a lot of concubines actually live in the same house as their wife? They live in the same house as 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 the man and his wife. Matter of fact, I told this story once before. I, I'm, not, I'm never going to mention this guy's name because he was a not a big celebrity, but he, he was a celebrity. When I lived in, in Hollywood, man, I met this guy who, again, if I, if I was to say his name, y'all would know him, and I ain't going to call him out like that. But um, he was a celebrity, and we were rapping, man. And uh, he was telling me, man, that at that time, he was living with his girlfriend I want I was gonna say wife but now I'm thinking I want his wife it was his girlfriend it was his girlfriend his current girlfriend his most recent ex-girlfriend the girlfriend he had before his current girlfriend and his ex-girlfriend's cousin and he said he was fucking all three of them he said he was fucking all three of them they were all three living with him and I was like damn really so wait a minute, let me get this straight. You living with your girlfriend, your next to last, your, your last, your girlfriend before this girlfriend, and her cousin. He was like, yeah. And he said, I'm fucking all three of them. And they all know about it. They you know, Obviously, they living with me, and they, they you know, basically like they down with my program. See, that's how you roll, man. That's, a, that's what you call a true player. Right there. That guy who I refuse to say his name, but that's that's a true player right there, man. When you when you have situations like that, that's when you can call yourself a true player. This motherfucker was fucking his current girlfriend, his most recent ex girlfriend, and his most recent ex girlfriend's cousin on a regular basis because they was all three living with him. That's the type of shit I'm talking about. That's when you gonna get kudos from me and you gonna leave me impressed is when you can tell me you roll like that. But if you got a girlfriend or a fiance, a wife, and you cheating on her behind her back, that's why I hated the movie uh, with Bill Bellamy called How to Be a Player. I hated that movie. Oh, man, I can't tell you how much I hated that movie. Oh, man, I almost wanted to walk outside of that movie with a picket sign protesting that movie. I hated it so much. That movie came out in the 90s. If you never saw it, it wasn't a good number one. It wasn't a good movie. It just wasn't a good movie. That's number one. But number two, man, it totally, it totally distorted the concept of being a true player, man. Because in that movie, man, Bill Bellamy wasn't no player. He was a guy who had a serious girlfriend, and he was cheating on her behind his, her back. That ain't no player, man. And I've said that multiple times. That ain't no player. But yeah, Louis C.K., man, he fucked up, man. He fucked up, man. And this relates to my last video, man. It's obvious reading the shit I've read about Louis C.K. in the last 24 hours. He don't know how to read women. He don't know how to read women. He would have been able to read that he was creeping these women out if he was really perceptive of women. He would have been able to read that he was creeping these women out. He didn't get these women aroused. That's why, why being good and erotic dirty talk comes into play, man. See, here's a secret to Alan Roger Cray if you don't know this already, man. Here's, here's one of my, my 
my just really simple secrets that I've talked about at different workshops and stuff. See, when I deal with women, man, I don't concentrate on fucking women. I never, ever concentrate specifically on having sex with women. Never do. Never do. Unlike a lot of men. I don't concentrate on having sex with women. I concentrate on getting women sexually aroused. That's my number one objective with women. I concentrate on getting women sexually aroused. Because I feel like if I get a woman sexually aroused, she's just going to naturally want to have sex with me. Whether it's oral sex, intercourse, or a combination of both. That's what I concentrate on. I never, I, I talked about that when I spoke in Berlin, Germany. And a lot of guys were, were tripping off of that. They were like, oh, interesting. But yeah, man, I never concentrate on having sex with women. Never. That's never, I call that putting the cart before the horse. If you're familiar with that phrase. That's putting the cart before the horse, man. I never concentrate on, on actually having sex with a woman when I'm interacting with a woman. I concentrate on getting a woman sexually aroused. What I concentrate on is creating powerful sexual thoughts and visualizations in a woman's head for her to marinate on that I feel will inevitably get her sexually aroused. That's what I concentrate on. I don't concentrate on the actual act of having sex with a woman. And I can tell by a lot of these Hollywood guys, man, they have no concept of that skill. They have no concept of that skill. And that's why I don't feel sorry for them. I will never defend them. I will never defend most of these motherfuckers that have been accused of sexual harassment, sexual mis And another thing, there's a couple things that vindicates, man, for me. That I, 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 don't, I don't wish bad on nobody, so I'm not saying I'm glad these guys have found themselves in this situation. But these situations have vindicated a couple things for me. Number one, I've had guys try to debate me over the years and say, Alan, you don't put enough emphasis on doing stuff physical with women like grabbing their ass or caressing their body while you're talking to them. Your shit's all about verbal, man. It's all about verbal. You need to put more emphasis on like, you know, just approach a woman and say just aggressively grabbing her ass. And if you notice, man, I say this and who said again, man, I'm not down with being sexual, physically aggressive with women. I'm all about being verbally provocative and even verbally explicit with women. But when it comes to phys being physical with women, I never encourage that until a woman gives you an obvious sign, an obvious sign that you have the green light to be physical with her. And look at all these cases in Hollywood, man. They involve guys groping women, man. Groping women and shit. I ain't down with that shit, dog. I never encourage that in my male clients, man. A lot of these guys who have been accused in this Hollywood scandal shit have been accused of just groping women. You you asking for some type of sexual harassment, sexual misconduct charge when you resort to groping women without their consent? That's fucked up, man. I'm on the women's side on that on that on those issues, man. I'm not down with men just groping women, man. I'm not down with that shit, dude. That's something I, I don't think I've ever done with a woman, man. I rarely, with women, am physically aggressive until the point where they give me some type of obvious verbal indicator or physical indicator that I have the green light to be physical with them. I, I'm all my shit's verbal, man. My shit's verbal. If it's you know, if I haven't fucked a woman yet. Now, if I've already fucked a woman ten times, I've been known to do physically aggressive shit. But if I ain't fucked a woman yet, nah, man, I, I don't believe in being real physical with women, man. Don't believe in that shit. So anyway, these Hollywood scandal issues have vindicated me in that area. It just shows, man, that, that that's not to your advantage to be that way, to be real physically aggressive with women, especially if you don't know how to read women. A lot of you motherfuckers don't know how to read women, man. Second thing it validates me on and vindicates me on. What have I said repeatedly in a bunch of my in my bunch of my video podcasts? A bunch of them. A lot of you motherfuckers try to argue with me about, oh, Alan, you always talk about you know stuff like self confidence and erotic dirty talk and verbal communication skills. Man, fuck that, man. It's all about money, fame, and power and status. Money, fame, power, and status. Money. 
fame, power, and stare. That's what it's all. That's the key, number one key to pulling bitches, man. You gotta have money, fame, power, and stare. Okay. Given these uh, Hollywood allegations and accusations, what's your excuse now? I'll wait. I'll wait. Louis C.K. got money, fame, status, influence in the entertainment industry. Has it prevented his career from going down the toilet in less than 24 hours? Harvey Weinstein, anyone? Kevin Spacey? Well, he's homosexual, but same principle. Man, come on, man. Y'all better listen to Alan Roger Curry and realize the credibility I have, the credibility that my advice has to you, man. I told y'all multiple times all that shit is overrated, man. Here's when I knew it was overrated, and I've said this before. Here's when I knew all that shit was overrated. The first few times that I fucked a woman who had a boyfriend, a fiancé, or a husband who was making way more money than me. That's when I knew that money was overrated. Because as you know, some of y'all have criticized me for this, but I fucked quite a few women who had a husband, a fiancé, or a boyfriend. And just about all those men were making more money than me. In some cases, way more money than me. Like, like 10 times more money than me. Yeah, I know. I told you about one situation. There was one chick. She was engaged to be married who I was fucking in Los Angeles. Her fiance, he was making about 900 grand a year, man. At the time, I was making about 35 grand a year. So he was making more than 10 times as much money as me. And I was fucking his fiance on a, without spending any money on it. So that's when I first knew, man. When I had situations like that, that's when I knew that money, material possessions, fame and status and all that shit was overrated, man. Again, man, I'll say this. If you got two guys that are both equally handsome and have an equal degree of sex appeal, but one guy is broke and unemployed and the other guy got a high degree of wealth and fame and status and all that shit, then yeah, in that situation, I would give the edge to the guy with the money and the fame and the status. Oh, of course. If all other things being equal, but one guy's broke and down on his luck financially, and the other guy got it going on, then yeah. So in other words, if you had two guys that both look like Brad Pitt, but the one Brad Pitt looking guy is broken and employed, and the other Brad Pitt looking guy got money, fame, and all that shit, then yeah, that's when I would say money and fame is going to help you. But if you got a guy that look like Brad Pitt that's making, say, $50,000 a year, and you got a guy like Louis C.K., that's a millionaire with fame and shit. He ain't gonna get more pussy than a motherfucker that's like Brad Pitt making 50 grand a year. I guarantee you he won't. 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 With the exception of tricking. If he just flat out starts tricking, that would be the only exception. But other than tricking, he ain't gonna get a higher quality or higher quantity of pussy than the guy that's like Brad Pitt that's making 50 grand a year. And this is what you guys need to, this is why I always tell you guys, wake the fuck up. When I use that phrase, wake the fuck up. This is what I'm trying to get you to realize, man. This Louis C.K. issue, man, that, that has come out of the last 24 hours, man, it has vindicated me and validated a lot of the shit that I've been telling you guys in some of my harsh admonishments, man. I mean, this dude... I ain't going to, you know, cast aspersion on him just yet. He might be able to rebound from this. But for right now, man, this dude's career is, is going down the toilet, man, in literally less than a... I mean, here's the thing I, I started off talking about, about the entertainment industry. I was saying, how oh, this type of behavior has been going on for years, decades. It's just that women before recently, they didn't weren't willing to speak up about it. But, like, I was reading about Louis C.K., and a lot of people, both male and female, they said, oh, if you work in the entertainment industry and more specifically within the world of comedians, they said everybody knew Louis C.K. was like this. This ain't nothing like surprising. Everybody knew Louis C.K. had a habit 
of going up to women he didn't know and asking them to watch him masturbate. Yeah, a lot of people have come out. They said this this has been known for like over ten years about Louis C.K. No, over I want to say over fifteen years. Like some people say, as far back as two thousand and two, Louis C.K. was known for propositioning women to watch it. That's the thing I, I still can't get, man. I can, I could have way see if he was propositioning women to actually have sex with him, either to suck his dick or give him some pussy. But most of his accusations sent around him just wanting women to watch him masturbate, man. I don't want to pass judgment on Louis C.K., but damn, man. What kind of motherfucker just wants a woman to watch him masturbate? I don't even understand that shit. If anything, when it comes to masturbation, I would rather watch a woman play with her pussy for me than for her to watch me stroke my dick. I don't even get that, man. But anyway, man, he fucked up, man. A lot of these Hollywood peak types have fucked up. They want more one. They should have read my books. They want more one. They want more one. And that's why I ain't defending most of these motherfuckers. Again, here's why I would defend not only a Hollywood celebrity, but any average Joe Schmo guy. If you approach a woman and you let her know in a confident, provocatively straightforward manner, that you want to engage in sexual activity with her, and she say respectful, respectfully declines your invitation. She says, no, I'm sorry, I'm just not interested. And then say days later, weeks later, months later, years later, she comes out and tries to somehow accuse you of sexually inappropriate behavior or sexual harassment. I'm going to defend you to the death. I'm going to defend you to the death. I'm going to defend you to the death. If that was the scenario, I'm going to defend you to the death and I'm going to criticize the shit out of that woman. But y'all guys who out here groping women, trying to sexually assault women, date rape women, trying to get women drunk and then take advantage of them, drug women and then take advantage of them, asking women to watch you masturbate, all this other crazy shit. Man, I ain't going to defend you on that shit. I ain't going to defend you on that shit. That shit's crazy. That shit's crazy. Y'all motherfuckers need to read my motherfucking books and be more one and wake the fuck up. Hashtag B B E B mode one four number four life. That's the hashtag. B mode one for life. B E M O D E O N E the number four. L I F E B Bo One for Life. Enjoy your weekend. I'll talk to you early next week. Peace. Yes, sir. Say it again. Yes, sir. Who's the king? Alan, you're the king. Say it again. Alan, you're the king. <laughs> you're dominating me. Say it again. Alan, you're dominating me right now. Mode one. Mode one. Daddy, can I go, please? You're the king. Say it again. Oh, my king. Oh, you're the fucking king. Yes. 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 Oh. Oh. You're the king, Alan. A.K.A. the king. Of verbal seduction. You know, it's the tone of your voice. How seductive your intonations are, the vibrations that you could just reach out over the phone lines and stroke a woman's breast just by the sound of your voice. How you could make her pussy so wet just by the sound of your voice. That's actually very hot. So you said my show was what? I said your show is powerful. Oh, say it again. Your show is powerful. I bet the king would fuck me really good. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. The king. The king. The king. The king.